and be glad in it. Amen. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you this morning, Lord. We invite your presence here today as we come to lift you up. We come to say thank you, Lord, for every blessing, every healing, every touch this morning, Lord. We pray let the Holy Ghost minister in this house, Lord, as we lift you up in Jesus' name. Let's put on that garment of praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We sang that little song, Let Us Have a Little Talk with Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Anybody have a good Christmas? Amen. Praise God. Got a reason to talk to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Anybody make it all through the holidays without COVID? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We had five people get COVID out of our family gathering. Yeah, it was a huge gathering, but five people. I thank God this morning I wasn't one of them. Amen. I'm thankful this morning. Praise God that the Lord has kept his hand upon us. He's brought us through another year. He's prospered our way. He's ordered our steps. He's been gooder to us than we deserve. Amen. He's always good. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, you're good to me. You're wonderful, Lord. We praise you. We bless your name. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. So good to see each and every one of you this morning. Praise God. I'll put these glasses on. I'll probably see some more of you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It just feels good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Feels good to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. Praise God. God's already been good to me this morning. I drove all the way from Leveland over here and realized I don't have a driver's license on me or any of that kind of stuff. And I thought, dear Lord... I'm getting senile, I guess. And then I realized I, I left it locked in the other vehicle from last night. So I, I've been doing quite a bit of driving without it. <laughs> but I don't want to go anywhere without Jesus. Praise God. Good to see each and every one of you. Amen. Some of you have been gone for a while. We've got one coming in here this morning on a crutch. Or, man, we're so glad to see you all back this morning. Amen. And if you're visiting today, make yourselves at home. We welcome you. Just jump right in, both feet first, into the worship and praise. Amen. Into the Word of God, into everything we do this morning. It's all about glorifying God. Amen. It's about lifting up our praises to the Lord of the Lord and King of Kings. Amen. Praise God. Let's continue to pray this morning for Sister Crudis, Sister Mills, uh, Sister Vanji, Sister Rebecca. Brother Schulte, uh, Sister Dilks, Olana Holloway, and Monica Hernandez, Brother Goody, who's here this morning. It's good to have him back with us. Michelle, John, who's traveling, BJ, uh, Domini, Domini, am I saying that right? Domini. Domini. Okay, and, and Brother and Sister Watts are sick. Gerald has cancer. Let's lift him up. Moses, Nieves family's got the flu. Or else they're flying. I believe they got the flu, though. We're going to lift them up. Brother Lee this morning, good to see him. But let's pray for him. Brother Richmond, Drew Richmond, uh, praise God. Amen. 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 Others this morning, by the lifting of our hands, Amen. praise God. I can say one thing. It looks like COVID is shortening up. Most of the cases now, after about four or five days, if you, yeah, it's, it seems like it's going away. So, uh, we want to make sure and pray for all of those that have been sick through the holidays, those that are uh, going through their struggles of life and everything else. We've got a brand new year ahead of us. Amen. And by the grace of God, it's going to be a great year. It's going to be a victorious year. Amen. Praise God. So we want to take these before the Lord and uh, lift them up. We also want to remember Braxton. Praise God. Amen. And if you have a need this morning, we invite you. Just come in faith. Come in faith around these altars this morning, knowing that us laying hands on you, we're just doing what God tells us to do. But you're, you're talking to Jesus this morning. That's what it's all about. Come in faith, believing God is. And he is able to do exceeding abundantly. And what else?
Praise God. Praise God. What an awesome God. What a mighty God. Amen. Special thanks this morning, Sister Karina, Sister Debbie, Brother Sister Halterman, Brother Hamilton. Church looks great. Thanks to all who do so much to work so hard to make things don't just happen. Uh, not good things anyway. Amen. Somebody has to do it. Amen. Praise God. And you know your reward is great in heaven. Amen. Praise God. But it's not just in heaven. Praise God. God rewards them that do things in secret even, the Bible tells us. Amen. He rewards them openly. Praise God. So those blessings we're getting, amen. If you want some blessings, just get involved. Amen. Praise God. Monday night prayer is going to be canceled. Uh, it's New Year's, Wednesday night Bible study, 7 p.m., Sunday morning worship, 10.30 a.m. This is our last service of the year, 2023. Amen. And so uh, let's give it our all. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Good to have Brother Goody home. We want him to come and sing this morning. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It's Brother Good, but that, 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 that <laughs> Good. Yeah, silent E, silent E. That's all right, good, good E's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm good with you, brother. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, singing a new song this morning. Um, I heard this song actually on the radio and immediately w ordered it because um, it's such a blessing for it to hear. Um, and it's even, an even more blessing for me to sing it for you guys this morning. So listen to the words of the song. And if it resonates with you, if you want to stand and worship and praise, please do. All right, brother.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Speak the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many people know how to pray in the name of Jesus? The Bible says, amen, doing everything in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about you, amen, but I love those songs, amen, that minister. I've enjoyed every song that's been sung this morning. Praise God. Thanks. Thank the Lord that Sister Crudus, amen, is back, amen, in service. And she's, she's still not at full capacity. Amen. Praise God. And so just continue to pray for her that God would put added strength back into her body. And God, I'm, and we're still praying, amen, for God to heal her lungs. Praise the Lord. It's good to be with you this morning. Amen. I'm enjoying being in the presence of the King. Amen. Whether you know it or not, the Lord is in this house. I said, whether you know it or not, the Lord is in this place. Amen. They say we run scriptures into the ground. Amen. Praise God. Well, maybe we're just trying to get a foothold. Amen. Brother Hunt said earlier, he said he loved that, that, uh, that song, Let Us Have a Little Talk with Jesus. I looked over at Brother ha uh, Halterman. I'm sorry, <laughs> Brother Hamilton. You guys look alike. You guys act the same. <laughs> Praise God. And I said the day that we're living in, we don't need a little talk with Jesus. We need a big talk with Jesus. Amen. Our world is going to hell in a handbasket. Amen. Praise God. You look at all of the corruption, the corrupt minds, the uh, reprobation, amen, the people that are in so much rejection against the Word of God. And I pray. I pray for our government. I pray for our nation. And I pray for people. Amen. God, what's it going to take for them to wake up? What's it going to take for them to turn back to you? Not everybody's going to turn back to God. That's a, that's a sad, sad statement. Amen. Praise God. But for those of us that are still facing the Lord, that are still trying, amen, praise God, to do our best and look unto Jesus Christ, he's still the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Praise God. You notice the Nieves family is not here today. Um, they called me before service, and they are all home with the flu. And so there's four or five of them that are down. I was hoping, amen, for them to be here because, amen, I was ready to shout the victory because we got our own Moses that's here. Got our own Elijah that's here. We got our own Benjamin, amen, our Joshua that's here. I was hoping to have a Daniel. Amen. Praise God. Moses, so good to see you back in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Now, amen, every time he was here before, I'd always say, Moses, you got you to gotta be careful and act right, you know, take care of Bethany. Now, Bethany, now you got to act right and take care of Moses. <laughs> amen. Praise God. It's good to be in church today. Hallelujah. There will be no Sunday school classes this morning. We're going to ask for everybody to stay here. Our Sunday school teachers, two of them are out. Amen. So we thought it would be a good thing to go ahead and leave all of the children in here. Uh, look around you. There are different families that are not here. Pray for Alonzo and Kristen and their children. Pray for Brother Hinesley and his family. They're not here. Of course, the Nieveses, they have the flu. Uh, Brother John is not with us. Michelle Lang's not here this morning. Uh, but Brother John's not here because he flew back. He went to Illinois. He's only been there just a few days now. And I got to talk to him yesterday. He says, Brother Crudus, he said, how are you doing? I said, man, I'm doing great. I said, this Saturday, I said, it's going to be 65 degrees out here. And he says, the high here is only going to be 40. Amen. Praise that 25 degrees difference makes a big difference. Amen. Praise God. So he's ready to come back home. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know what you came for today, but I came to be blessed by the Lord and instructed by the Word of God. Praise God. Going to ask for everybody to stand. We're going to go to the reading of the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the Lord minister to your heart today. Praise God. Let me get this jacket off. Okay, Sister Crude has passed out some papers. Okay, what are they? Okay. Uh, okay, it's got your name, date of birth, and anniversary. That way we can always recognize your birthday and recognize your anniversary. Uh, me and Sister Crudis have been married for 44 years. Brother Hunt, I think y'all been married longer than that. Okay. You don't sound too excited. 
<laughs> well, there's some you anoint with oil. There's other you, others you anoint with a brick. You got to get their attention one way or the other. Praise God. Amen. I prayed the other day and talked to the Lord. I had a very, very good meeting with the Lord the other morning. When I was praying to God, I told him, I said, God, I said, I realized, I said, I don't have to have a nice home to live in just as long as I got a roof over my head. I don't care if it's canvas or if it's plywood or cardboard, as long as I got a place to live. I said, God, I said, I don't have to have the nicest car. I said, you could just give me a Volkswagen Beetle, and if that's what you're driving, no discredit there. Amen. I don't have to have the nicest car, the nicest home. I don't have to have all of the good food. Amen. Praise God. But the one thing I got to have is I got to have God. I've got to have the Lord every day. Amen. He's that manna from above. He's that water that flows out of a rock. Praise God. I'm, I'm here to tell you, I can't do anything without Jesus. Amen. Praise God. We have a built-in mechanism in our body when God made us. Amen. Everything else, amen, especially when you get older, you make a list of things that you got to do, things you don't want to forget. Praise God, amen. So you make a, a little checklist, and so you put on there things that I got to get done, amen, because we can forget, praise God. Aren't you glad that God built in, amen, a spiritual mechanism that you don't have to think about breathing? You don't have to get up and say, oh, I got to breathe again. I've got to take another breath. God put that into us. Praise God, amen. And we ought to thank the Lord for that, amen, because sometimes we can go to bed at night and just forget some things, and man, what if you forget breathing? Amen. Praise God. Well, you won't see another day. Praise the Lord. I want to go to the Word of the Lord today. I feel that I have a message that will usher us into the year 2024. Amen. This is our last service of the year 2023. Praise God. Amen. And I want to take advantage, amen, of this service. I want to make it the best. I want to leave out of here, amen, praise God, with a shout, with victory in my heart, praise God. Amen. We don't know what 2024 holds. We just know who holds tomorrow. Amen. We're going to go to the Word of the Lord, and I want you to bear with me. I'm going to give you time there. Amen. Because I want to lay a, a little bit of groundwork here real quick. Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 4. Everybody say, minister to us. We want to hear the Word of God because we want to leave and come back. I heard that, brother. Brother Hamilton said, when I said, we want to leave, he says, before lunch. <laughs> Y'all better worship today. I can tell you that. Genesis chapter 6, verse number 4. If you got it, say Amen. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. I want us to turn to the book of Numbers, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13, verse 32. It's the entrance of Israel into the land of Canaan, their promised land. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. 1 Samuel chapter 17, right after the book of Joshua, Judges, Ruth. And then you've got First and Second Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 
I'm going to tell you like Elizabeth Taylor told her last husband, I won't keep you long. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 2, And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Now turn to verse number 45. Somebody say he was a giant. Verse 45. Then said David to the Philistines, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day, watch the words of David carefully, will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Keep turning right, and you won't get left. Second Samuel chapter 21. This is where I'm going to be preaching from. Now, all of it ties together. 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 15. Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. The Philistines, the men, were the constant enemies of the people of God. And David went down and his servants with him and fought against the Philistines, and David waxed faint. And Ishbi Binab, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight, means that the head of that spear weighed 12 pounds. He being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. Now watch. But Abishai, the son of Zariah, secured him and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swear unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. Because David was up in years. David had grown faint. Amen. And that giant thought to take advantage of David's age. Now watch this. And it came to pass, verse 18, after this, there was a man, or there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then uh, Simekai, the Hushathite, slew Saph, which was of the sons of the giant. Now watch. From one giant to another giant. And then we've got verse 19. And there was again a battle in God with the Philistines, where Elhanan, the son of Jeroagim, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Amen. From giant to giant to giant. Verse 20, And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers, and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. Verse 21, and when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimea, the brother of David, slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Brother Lee, you can go ahead and put up there the title of the message. I want to preach for just the next few moments, and I do mean the next few moments. There were giants in the land. Brother Hunt, would you pray? You may be seated this morning. What a tremendous reading. I prayed 
the other day and I said, Lord, I said, I want to take us from 2023 into the year 2024. And there's many messages that I preach since I've been here going on 20 years. Amen. And uh, with a new year and a new year. But I said, Lord, I said, I'd like to have something fresh again from the throne of God. I've never preached this message before, but I felt the Lord give it to me as he spoke to my heart the other day. And I came down here to read some scriptures. Our reading, amen, cannot be allowed to be overlooked by us because it speaks of spiritual conflicts and spiritual conquests. Great religious issues today are at stake. And there is a war that must be waged. There's a battle that has to be fought. And every day, every day that you and I live, there are opposing forces of evil seeking to destroy the church and the very purpose of God. We face gigantic evils in this 21st century. The devil is still seeking whom he may devour. He's come to steal and to kill and to destroy them that would live for God. He is relentless in his pursuits and in his deceits. And even today, there are what I call modern giants that are very formidable and very deceptive. The things that are now taking place in our world we thought we would never, ever see. Some 30, 40 years ago, praise God, we believed that marriage between a man and a woman. We thought, praise God, amen, that people would understand that murder was still murder. That abortion, praise God, was still wrong. That there were things, amen, that the world just understood. But we are facing, amen, giants, amen, of evil in the day that we are living in today. So I've come to remind us that just as there were giants in the land then, there are still giants in the land today. Maybe you're not hearing me, praise God, amen. There ought to be a David among us. There ought to be another Jonathan among us. There ought to be another Helhanan among us, praise God. We ought to arise to the occasion, church. I'm here to tell you, we are facing some of the worst times that there's ever been on the face of this earth. This service is the last service of 2023. We are stepping into the year 2024. And how we leave 2023 will affect how we enter 2024. There is a direct correlation or parallel of how one leaves and how one enters. There's a corresponding property, if not principle, amen, of going and then coming. Church, I'm leaving 2023 with victory. I'm coming back in 2024 with victory. I'm leaving with the Holy Ghost. I'm coming back with the Holy Ghost. I'm leaving with a shout. I'm coming back with a shout. Hey, I'm leaving with faith in God. And I'm coming back with faith in God. From 2023 to 2024, there are some immutable facts that I want to run by us that cannot be denied. There are some glorious truths that cannot be destroyed. I pray that you're listening. Are you ready? When it comes to this new year, when it comes to 2024, and when it comes to this church, amen, I want you to know that the Bible says that God said these words in Isaiah 54 and 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It doesn't matter praise God what the devil comes up with in 2024 he's still no match amen for the weapons of God I'm almost there praise God 2nd Corinthians 10 and 4 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. 1 John 4 and 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome, and because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I still haven't reached some of you yet. John 16, he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Matthew 9 and 2, he said, be of good cheer. Thy sins have been forgiven. Matthew 14, 27, be of good cheer. Here, it is I, be not afraid. Amen. I wonder what 2024 holds. Amen. I'm not worried about tomorrow. I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. Praise God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did yesterday, praise God, he can do today. And it doesn't matter what we face tomorrow. We still got a God that's an ever-present help in the time of need. 
Proverbs 18 and 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and they are safe. Mark 16, 17, in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they still shall recover. I'm talking about leaving 2023 and stepping into 2024. I'm talking about spiritual conflicts and spiritual conquests. I'm talking about facing our giants and defeating our enemies. We need to get the facts. We need to examine the records. In Romans 8 and 31, Paul said, What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Just like Dagon of old, who fell before the ark of God, he still must fall today like the walls of Jericho that the children of Israel marched around they still must fall before the people of God hear me now praise God and like the Goliaths of the world that David faced in his day amen they too must fall before the people of God today These are the facts and these are the records recorded in the Word of God. So we stand with the Apostle Paul who facing the enemies of his day and his time said in Romans 8 verse 37 through 39, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Watch now, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord amen somebody shout amen Amen. hallelujah praise God could you shout with a voice of triumph knowing praise God that you're not standing alone that he said I'll never leave you nor forsake you that lo I am with you always even to the end of the age praise God that no matter where you are you've got a God amen that said I'll be with you I won't leave you through every trial every test I'll make a way of escape I want to help this church to understand some things that the Lord has trying to show me. Praise God. Don't be afraid of tomorrow. Amen. Praise God. We are persuaded and we are totally convinced, amen, that God still has the upper hand. Many are the victories of the past. We can read them in the scriptures, but many shall also be the victories of the future. From the old to the new, God is still working among his church. From yesterday to today and from today to tomorrow, we are totally persuaded and convinced that with the passing of 23, the coming of 24, that the same God who kept us in 23 is going to keep us in 24. No matter what enemies we face, amen, no matter the enemies that we fight, praise God, what comes or how it comes, God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Some of you still aren't convinced. The record, amen, Let me give you one of my favorite verses of Scripture. I'm amazed at what you brought out yesterday when we were talking. But I didn't want to tell you I already had insight. Isaiah 43, verse 1 through 3. But now this saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. And I have called thee by my name, and thou art mine. Now watch, for when thou passest through the waters, I will still be with thee. And when you go through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, you shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Watch, for I am the Lord thy God. Amen. Amen. Somebody say it with me. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
Come on, let's say it again. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm not moving any further till you get this. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise God, amen. That means that truth has already won, and truth will continue to win, and truth shall win. And in the end, praise God, whether it be 2024, amen, praise God, we shall come out victorious because we are the Lord's. Woo. That's just the introduction. We shall never be delivered from all our enemies until we get to heaven. I'm going to awaken you, praise God, to the facts of the Bible that I read to you. Battle after battle, giant after giant, amen, David continued to face. The nation of Israel, amen, had to continue to fight and to war, praise God, even for their promised land. Amen. So we shall never be delivered from all of our enemies until we get to heaven. Until that day, there will continue to be false teachings and false prophets. There will be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There will be enemies from both without and from within. There will be men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Evil men and seducers who shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Therefore, the words of Jesus are come to mind in Matthew. Matthew 11 and 12, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. Amen. Praise God. But the violent take it by force. You're not hearing me. God says, I have already ordained your victory. I've already sustained, amen, your promise. Praise God. What's wrong with us, amen? Just go into the battle and know, praise God, that you're not there alone. For the battle is not yours. The battle is God's. Lord, help me this morning, praise God. I want to relay this. Amen, praise God. He said the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. You're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. You're going to have to war against evil. You're going to have to take a stand and battle your way to the victory, amen. The die has already been cast and the battle line's already been drawn by God. You must war a good warfare. You must fight the good fight of faith. You must continue on in well-doing. You can't throw in the towel. You can't put up the sword. You can't do away with the shield of faith. you got to continue on, amen, to fight the good fight of faith. Come on, church. I'm trying to help you today, praise God. Amen. Hey, I'm not only going to leave 2023 with a shout. I'm coming back to 24 with a shout. I'm not only leaving with the Holy Ghost. I'm coming back with the Holy Ghost. I'm not only leaving with victory. I'm coming back with victory. Well, I don't believe in fighting, praise God. Well, you'll never make it. I said, you'll never make it. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 26, so fight I not as one that beateth the air. He says, I know who my adversary is. I mean, I know, amen, that he is subtle and crafty. And I know that he walketh out seeking whom he may devour. And I know, praise God, amen, that he's going to come back after a season. He says, so I fight not as one that biteth the air. He says, amen, praise God. He said, I'm going to continue to fight the good fight of faith. In other words, what he's saying is, I'm for war, amen, praise God. I've got people, amen, that say, well, pastor, I just wish we had a peaceful existence. Not going to happen until we get to heaven. Not going to happen until after the rapture. I'm here to tell you, you got an adversary. you got an enemy. There are foes, there are giants that are still in the land, and the church is going to have to learn how to fight, praise God. We're going to have to learn, amen, how to put our shoulder, praise God, to it. we got to give our heart, amen, and understand this is a fight to the finish, praise God. Hey, it might be round nine, but there's coming round ten, and we're praying for the Lord to give us a, a mighty victory in 24. And so with that said, amen, I bring us to our text of Genesis 6 and 4. It tells us that there were giants in the land, and I want you to get this. Numbers 13, 32, there were still giants in the land. Here they are, amen, after 40 years in the wilderness. They're ready to cross over into Canaan land, to the promised land, and yet when they get there, they find out that the giants, amen, are still in the land. So you got a promise from God. You got an inheritance of the Lord. Amen. You're fixing to cross over. Don't think, praise God, amen. You're going over, amen, with a little bit of soft soap. And you're going, praise God, with no sweat. God says, amen, I've given you the land, but you're still going to have to fight for it. There's still an enemy in the land, praise God. Church, don't ever think when we come here that we don't have to fight in prayer. And we don't have to fight, amen, in worship, praise God. Church, I'm here to tell you, put on the armor of God. Put on, amen, the weapon of praise. Start 
praising your way into the presence of God. Start lifting up the name of Jesus. It's the mighty weapon, praise God, that God has given to the church. Amen. Praise God. Are you ready? When Israel got ready to get her promised land, she met, amen, her formidable enemy. The Bible tells us in verse 32, there were men of great stature, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which came uh, from the giants. They were descendants of an age-old group that continued throughout the scriptures, that continue even to this day. Now, I'm, I'm trying, amen, to maintain this. But we got some giants we're facing today. There's all kinds of giants of ungodliness and unholiness and unfaithfulness. There's giants of rebellion and disobedience, praise God. You're not hearing me. We got giants, amen, of stubbornness, praise God. Well, bless God, I ain't going to do it. Well, God's not going to make you do it, but he can make you wish you had, praise God. But if you're going to make it into heaven, amen, you're going to have to fight, praise God. You're going to have to fight against the flesh. You're going to have to fight against the world. You're going to have to fight against the devil. Come on, church, praise God. And sometimes, amen, you're just going to have to get out there, amen, come hell or high water and say, blessed be the name of the Lord, I'm going to live for God. I don't care what happens. I don't care who tries to fight against me. There are opposing forces, but thank God God is for us. Amen. Amen. I'm going to try it again. Amen. They even continue to this day, and they still fight against God's church. They still fight against God's people. Amen. They have their walled cities. They have their strongholds, their vast armies, and their arsenals, and they have to be fought, and they must be defeated. Right. Now, I'm going to say something, praise God, got to highlight it in my notes. If we do not conquer them, they will conquer us. If you do not defeat the enemy, the enemy will one day defeat you. What are you saying, Brother Crutus? The work of the church is not finished. The battles you and I face are not over. Let every man gird his sword and go to the battle. Let every man lift his hand and let every one put on the armor of God. We are called to be soldiers in the army of God. We are to be warriors for the cause of Jesus Christ. Matthew 10, 34, you ready? Jesus said, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but I came with a sword. I came to bring a sword, praise God. I'm here to tell you, he's still El Shaddai. He's the God of war. Maybe you don't understand that. He's not just the God of peace. He's also the God of war. He said, I came to bring division. I came to bring a sword. Luke 22, 36, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. That's what Jesus told his disciples. Amen. I preach messages on discipleship, and some of you get real queasy. Well, dear God, I don't know if any of us are going to make it. Amen. Why not? I might as well confess. Brother John, two weeks ago, helped me here at the church, clean up everything after the Christmas program, put everything back in order, helped me back in the platform, praise God. And I told him, I said, now, if you're going to be a disciple, I said, you're going to have to mow the lawn. He got out there. He mowed two-thirds of the lawn. I did one-third because I'm already a disciple. Hello. Everybody thinks, amen, that just coming to church that makes you a disciple. No, you're going to have to work at it. Amen. You're going to have to obey the Word of God. You're not hearing me. Romans 13 and 4, speaking of the ministry, watch this. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Even the pastor has to bear the sword. Even the pastor has to lift the sword. Thank God for men of God that are not afraid, amen, to tell you the truth, that love you enough. Hey, church compassion praise God is good but if we've got too much compassion that we never tell anybody what's wrong amen our compassion is sending them to hell we've got to understand there's still a sword that needs to be in this pulpit praise God but thank God we've taken that sword and used it as a scalpel and we've come to do spiritual surgery because we want your heart circumcised we want your spirit right with God we've come to do battle every time we come to this church 
Amen. Amen. Let me try it again. Matthew 11 and 12, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Amen. You're not just going to slip your way into heaven. Amen. There's a sword that has to still be carried. And there's a shield, amen, that has to be lifted. And there's a breastplate that must be worn, according to Ephesians 6 and 12. Amen. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, church, I just got to tell you, amen, praise God, this is a spiritual warfare. There are enemies, amen, that are attacking this church. Whether you know it or not, the devil does visit from time to time, praise God. God, and we're still going to have to have on the full armor of God. We're going to have to have the helmet of salvation. We better have on the breastplate of righteousness. We better know how to wield the sword of the Spirit. We better make sure we lift up, amen, the shield of faith, whereby quenching all the fiery darts of the wicked, praise God. Church, I'm here to tell you, we're in for a battle, praise the Lord. You think 2024, amen, is just going to blow in with the wind. Let me tell you, it's coming, praise God, amen, with an arsenal of truth, and we got to make sure that we fight, amen, until the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ comes back. Now I'm preaching more than some of you, amen, are understanding. Praise God. If you're going to have the victory, if you're going to win your fight, if you're going to kill your giant, you're going to have to be victorious, amen, in 2024. In the year 2024, amen, you cannot take off the armor of God. Amen. If you're going to subdue this world, overcome your flesh, conquer sin, and defeat the devil, you're going to need the whole armor of God. What are you saying, Brother Crutus? Prayer is a must. According to Matthew 17, 21, Matthew 26, 41, preaching, amen, is still needed. 1 Corinthians 1, 21, 2 Timothy 4 and 2, faith, amen, is vital and essential. Hebrews 11 and 6, Ephesians 6 and 16, attendance is still required. Hebrews 10, 25, Acts 2 and 1. There are giants, amen, that we are facing today. The, 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 the uh, uh, title of the message, there were giants in the land, amen, but there are also giants, amen, in the land today. There's giants of resistance. There's giants of deceit. There's giants giants of temptation, age-old spirits that affect and afflict the world and the church, age-old demons that are both past and present. You slay one, then there's another. You handle one, then there's another, praise God. Look at David, praise God, amen. He started out, amen, with Goliath, but that was not the only giant that he would ever face. That was not the only battle he was ever going to fight, praise God. And God already knew that. He said, David, don't ever lay down the sword. David, don't ever get into a mindset, praise God, that you don't have to go out to war when you think you don't have to war, that's when the enemy steps in and takes over your life. Church, I'm here to tell you, we've got to make sure we still got the whole armor of God. Now I'm trying, praise God. Amen. Can you imagine? Man, I just, man, I just defeated that temptation. Praise God. A few moments later, amen. Here comes another one. Man, where did that come from? Amen. You got another spirit. Amen. That you're going to have to handle. There's many spirits, seducing spirits in this world. Amen. I'm just trying to help you to understand, praise God, because some people think, amen, that the pastor is Superman's brother, that he never has, amen, a fight on his hands, amen, praise God. Let me tell you something, my friend. I have to fight every day. I have to fight against this flesh. I got to crucify the flesh every day, amen. Praise God. Hey, I still got to cast out devils. Come on, hear me now, but you can't cast out the flesh. You crucify the flesh, praise God. Amen. There's things, amen, I got to deal with. I got to keep worldliness out of the church. I got to keep carnality out of the church, praise God. There are spirits, amen, that come in. In here and say, well, if you would just lighten up, if you would just lighten up, praise God, if you would just compromise a little bit, honey, there's a giant, amen, called compromise. There's a giant called tolerance, praise God. Church, I'm here to tell you, we are to love the sinner, but we are still supposed to hate the sin. Thank God for every victory that God has given us and every conquest, but the battle is not over. The battle is still raging. Because the enemy of your soul is still seeking whom he may devour. So we cannot slacken up on prayer. We cannot slacken up on our attendance to the house of God. We cannot lay down this Bible called the truth. Amen? Hear me now. Hallelujah. There's never a time to not fight 
for God. Well, I got a few of you out there. There's never a time to not fight for holiness, godliness, and separation. Because there is no middle ground with God. There is no neutral stance in the word of the Lord. Jesus said in Matthew 12 and 30, you're either for me or you are against me. Amen. There are giants, amen, that are still among us. And either you're going to fight or you will fall. Again, we shall never be delivered from all the enemies until we get to heaven. Giants are among us today. And in our text of 1 Samuel 17, it's the story of David and Goliath. We know it well. We see his courage. He courageously defeats the Philistine champion with a sling and a stone and with faith in God. David wasn't a weekend warrior. David wasn't a sideline soldier. In fact, when David appeared on the scene, a man, he came to bring some cheese and bread to his brother's. But he heard the boasts of the enemy. I'm here to tell you, praise God, God give us spiritual ears to hear. Because the enemy today is coming among us and saying, you don't have the power. You don't have what it takes to live for God. You're just a has-been, amen, praise God. But I'm here to serve the devil. Notice, amen, praise God. He was defeated when God kicked him out of the heaven. He's going to be uh, defeated when the church kicks him out of the church. Can I get an amen, praise God? I'm trying to tell you. I've come to serve you. Notice, amen. We're here for the long haul. We're here to fight the good fight of faith. We're here to stay strong. And you're not hearing me, praise God. Somebody ought to pick up a sword. Somebody ought to lift up the shield of faith. Somebody ought to put on a breastplate of righteousness. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Those giants are still among us. David used a sling and a stone. David wasn't a weekend warrior, but the Bible says, so David prevailed. Watch this, 1 Samuel 15, 17, 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine, smote him, slew him, and took his head off. Now, now, now just stay with me for a moment. But we've had a lot of battles. There's been some good fights. Man, we've knocked him down. We beat him up, but I'm here to tell you it ain't over until we take his ugly head off. Amen. You know what David is saying, amen, when he took off his head? Now, he'd already knocked him down. I mean, he's already laying on the ground, praise God. David says, amen, this is a principle. Amen, I am going to separate. I'm going to cut your head, praise God, so you'll never, ever rise again. And that head, amen, had to do with separation. When you separate yourself from the world and separate yourself unto God, that world will never take over your body again. This world, praise God, will never have control over you because if you'll walk in the spirit you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh if you'll come to the battle to fight and lift up the sword of truth even in the shield of faith i promise you praise god you're going to leave 2023 with victory and you're coming back in 2024 with victory Woo. and david smote him and david slew him there's a principle here because if you'll stay in the battle you will defeat your enemy you're not hearing me because I got this one highlighted. If you'll stay in the fight, amen, praise God, amen, you will defeat your enemy. Well, how do you know that, Brother Crutus? How can you be so sure? Watch what David said in our text, 1 Samuel 17, 46. He said, this day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. This day I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. This day, the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field will eat your flesh. I can see David talking to his adversary, to his enemy, talking to the giant of his time. Watch this. The question has been asked, wasn't David being a little presumptuous? Wasn't David being arrogant and proud? Was he being pompous and overbearing? The answer is no. Watch what he says in verse 47. It's the one thing that this church must never, ever allow to be forgotten. He says in verse 47, for the battle is the Lord's. 
How do you know you're going to have victory, praise God? When you've done all to stand, stand therefore, praise God. There's never a time to turn around. There's never a time to back up, praise God. There's no sounding of the retreat, amen. Everything with God is forward motion, amen. He says, go forth. Uh, he said, reach the world. He said, teach my Bible, teach my word, my gospel, praise God. Uh, hey, how do you know you're going to be victorious? Because the battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord's, praise God. Uh, but I'm going to stand, amen. Uh, and I'm going to lift the sword, and I'm going after the enemy, and I shall be victorious. It's doing more for me than it did for you. He says, for the battle is the Lord's, and he's going to give you into my hands. I'm going to put the devil under my feet. I'm cutting off his ugly head. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to be the funeral director of his funeral. You're, you're not hearing me. Come on, come on. Praise God. As long as I stay in the fight, amen, I'm going to win. Why? God's for me. You said it. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Surely not the devil. Somebody say amen. Praise God, amen. I'm trying to help us. The, bi the, bi the battle is the Lord's. If you only knew how close you were, amen, to your victory. If you only knew how close you were, amen, to your answer from God. If you only knew, amen, how safe you were in the hands of God from start to finish. One writer said, amen, that if he begins a good work in you, he is able to complete it until the day of his coming. Once God started something in you, he says, you're mine. Amen, praise God. Victory, praise the Lord. Amen, is the word and the watchword, amen, of this hour. Praise God. If you knew that you were in the hands of God and no man could pluck you out, there would be such a vibrancy in your worship and an expectancy in your praise. There would be more joy and delight in serving God. How can you shout like that, Brother Crudus? How can you dance before the Lord like that? How can you run the aisles, praise God? How can you be so boisterous, amen, in worship, praise God? You don't understand, praise the Lord, because I'm leaving with victory. I'm not going to suffer defeat. The battle is the Lord's, amen. He promised it, praise God. He says, you're mine, amen, and I'm going to keep you to the end of the age. Hear me now. Praise God. Where's the vibrancy today? I believe, amen, praise God, because we have forgotten how safe we are in the hands of God. Somebody say it with me. The battle is the Lord's. Somebody say it with me. God's got this. Psalms 34 and 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. I said every one of them, praise God, amen. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to men. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation, watch, make a way to escape. 1 Samuel 17 and 50. So David prevailed over the giant, smote him, slew him. You see, David began his walk with God and his glory with the conquest of just one giant, for which he is most remembered of. We all know about 1 Samuel chapter 17 with David and the Goliath. But our text in 2 Samuel 2 and 1, or verse 21, reveals that there were still giants in the land. And David arose to meet the challenge. David continued to lift the sword and fight. These scriptures show us the reality of a continued warfare, of an ongoing conflict. They teach us that even tomorrow in 2024, we are going to face our giants. So in... 2 Samuel 21, 15, moreover, the Philistines had yet war again. I'm reading this, amen, again. I'm closing. Musicians, get ready. The Bible said they had yet war again in verse 15 of 2 Samuel 21. And David went down and his servants with him and fought against them. But there were four giants to dispose of. There were four battles to continue to fight in. There's never a time for us to slacken our efforts to put off the armor of God. Now watch me closely. In verse 16, there came Ishbabinab, one of the sons of the giant. He came to slay David, but Abishai killed him. Then verse 18, it came to pass after this, there was again another battle. And Saph, one of the sons of the giants, came, but Sibichai slew him. 
Then verse 19, there was again a battle with the Philistines, and the brother of Goliath was slain by Elhanan. Verse 20, and there was yet another battle, and there was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, and Jonathan slew him. Now watch, it seems that the most powerful enemies are reserved for the last. Amen. And if this is the year of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it could be because things could happen overnight. But I'm just going to tell you, God is getting us prepared for the battle of 2024. He's showing us, amen, that the head of Satan is going to be raised again, and there's going to be evils, amen, praise God, that are going to come. So please hear me, amen, praise God. These four giants, it took battle after battle. They fell by not only by the hand of David, but by the hand of his servants. What are you saying, Pastor? Every one of you must slay your own giant. Every one of you must stand in the gap and make up the hedge. Every one of you, amen, must be strong and lift the sword. We're going to need a powerful church for the year 2024. We're going to need a church that knows how to pray, knows how to fight, amen, in the battle of spiritual warfare. There should be some Davids among us who are ready to face the giants of this world because yesterday's victories, amen, should take us into tomorrow's victories. Amen. Let's sing before the Lord. Could we stand in the house of God? Amen. There were giants in the land, and there are giants still in the land. And there will come a day when the last battle will be fought and the last enemy will be defeated. There will be a day of completeness and perfection, for every sin, every evil, and every enemy will be no more. 
Just like the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 14, when they crossed the Red Sea, standing on the other side, they were able to look back, amen, over the sea, over the arena of conflict, and they saw not one living Egyptian alive. But until that day, until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're still going to have to wage a good warfare. We're still going to have to fight the good fight of faith. We're still going to have to ensue the battle. Amen. Praise God. Let's put our hands together. Let's thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister Hussman, let me know this is her 52nd anniversary of having the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Amen. That is wonderful. Praise the Lord. The Lord knows how to keep you. Praise God. Amen. Let's not forget there's no service tonight. Uh, there's going to be a lot of revelry out there tonight. Amen. People, amen, are going to be insane tonight. There's going to be drunks on the road. Uh, I suggest that we all stay home tonight. Pray in the new year if you can. Praise God. Pray for Brother Lee. Brother Lee has had some problems with sleeping and insomnia. And I gave him a prescription today, and I told him, I said, take two of my sermons, go home, turn them on, and you'll fall right to sleep. Praise God. Amen. So pray for Brother Lee. He's been up for the last couple of days with no sleep. He said, I'm only here by God. Well, that's the truth with every one of us. We're only here by God. You're dismissed in the love of Jesus. Shake somebody's hand. Greet one another on your way out.